Facebook here, Instagram here. If you're looking for a translation, hit us up over on Facebook because there are translation lines. Um, I'm so excited to chat with you today about opening doors to possibilities by being you. Um, I did a big free class last month. And if you're interested, you can go get that download on my website, Um, And what we did was we went over seven tools to creating the life you love. And so what we've chosen to do now is to come here and do joint semi semi joint lives um, to talk about three of the tools that you guys voted on you wanted to hear more about. So today the tool is knowing what is true for you. So feel free to pop in the comments um, in either place and I'll do my best to look at both places. Um, what is it that uh, you'd like to know about this tool? Because knowing what is true for you is actually in this reality, in the place, the, the world as at large is often going against the grain, not always, but often, because we are, um, I'm going to give a shout out to like the parenting classes that I do, which is being you being with them. Shout out to you guys that are in that um, program that we do once a month. But we, we start to look at all the places where we're programmed to what is right based on someone else's point of view, based on the world's point of view, based on your parents' point of view. And it's not to make your parents wrong in any way, but they have an idea of what they would like their kid to grow up as, right? So when you're oh, sweaty, um, when you're growing up, your parents, like even when you were conceived or even thought of as um, an idea in someone's world, a lot of times if you were my kid, which Shout out to my kids. Um, I already had you named when I was like in third grade, right? I already had ideas of what my kids were going to be like and what how many of them I was going to have and what their names were going to be. And none of those names got chosen. <laughs> but we start to create the people before the being even shows up asking, hey, what would, the, what would the being like to be? And what would they like to choose? So here you are, a product you're not a product, but in this, in, in this analogy, you come in, or it's not even an analogy, sorry. You come in to these people who are often so excited to greet you, but they're greeting you often with what they would like you to be. The world doesn't ask you, Hey, what would you like to be? Unless you're like in preschool, because my, I remember one of my daughter's preschool graduations, they asked all the kids what they were going to be when they grew up. And this one kid rocked my world because he said, when I grew up, I want to be a dinosaur. And I thought that was the best thing in the whole fucking world. Okay. So he's going to be a dinosaur when he grew up. Um, but a lot of the little kids who were standing in those lines and once were us, were like, I'm going to be this. And you had these big dreams. And, and whether that was being fed to you or you were still willing to dream about what is true for you um, and look from that place, little by little, the world starts to tell you, hey, that's not possible if you're not like that. If you don't look like that, that's not possible. And you start to build these ideas of what is possible for you and turn that into what is true for you. What if everything you thought was true for you, you could ask more questions about and actually get clear on it? What if all the ideas that are limiting you, all the, the judgments that you have of you that the world has put on you, the limitations, were actually more about where you limited yourself taking on someone else's point of view about you or about what you, what is possible to create a lot of times our families are are um in in total caring often and from their point of view this is total caring so it's not to make people wrong i just want to, you guys to hear that but i know i did it as a parent until i started using the access tools of like here's the roadmap to my life that you should live yours on so here's everything i did wrong here's everything that um I can tell you to give you a head start because um, I already went through this at your age. Here's how people act. Here are the rules you have to live by. 
here's my experience. Never looking for your experience. What is this for you? Asking you questions. What's true for you? Um, I know as a parent, one of the things I do my best to um, acknowledge and be with with my kids is asking them questions, but also not trying to act like I know anything about what it's like to be them because that's their journey. I don't know what it's like to grow up in today's world. The world was totally different when I was in high school or junior high or elementary school even, right? And so, and that was the same for all of us. Our parents did their best, but a lot of times it's from projecting onto you. So Sarah, what does this have to do with knowing what's true for you? Great question. I'm going to tell you. So basically <laughs> when you go into um, buying what the world is telling you about you, when you look at what your parents are projecting out into the world about what you can create and you're buying that is what is real for you, you will often lay the, the path for the future that matches that. Not actually what lights you up, not actually what excites you, not um, where your true magic and capacity shine. It's based on someone else's projection. So how do we move through that? Well, in Access Consciousness, uh, there's a tool called Light and Heavy. And um, a great way to start to ask is like, look at, look at any choice you have in your life or anything in front of you that you'd like to change. And then be, ask yourself, like, if I were truly being me, this is my favorite question of all time. Thank you, Dr. Dean here from, um, for putting it in the Being You Change in the World book. If you guys don't have that book, please go check it out. But um, if I were being me right now, what would I choose? And allow that awareness in, you guys, because what I see a lot of us do, myself included, is I'll ask the question, but I won't want the awareness because it means that if I have the awareness, I will have to choose it. Like, so if I know that, like, leaving my job, right, is what's going to come up. Like, I will be like, oh my God, I'm not ready to leave my job. So I'll block what's true for me. Okay. So if I were really, if I were truly being me here, what would I choose? Just allow the awareness in and see if you don't lighten up. Let it in. Go, oh wow. If I were truly being me here, I would choose this. Okay, cool. If I would choose this, then what would, what would it look like to have the awareness of what you're actually choosing and if it's true for you? I hope that makes sense. My brain's a little foggy this morning, but um, for me, uh, so uh, in, right before COVID, I decided that I was going to close my salon that I owned for 15 years. And I was avoiding that because uh, I think I had this idea of failure if I closed it down or all the people I were going to let down. How many of us are choosing things that aren't true for us based on who we're going to let down? So I was going to let down all my stylists, all my clients who'd been coming to me for years that were saying, you know, for years, like I come here because just being with you makes me feel better. It's not even about hair, you know? And I was like, wow, I can't, if I choose that, um, all these people are going to be disappointed and disappointing people was something I dare not ever do. That's how I created my whole life was being valuable to those who, um, needed me. And that's how I felt my own value. So, I started to look at my life and where I was lit up was when I was playing with the tools of access consciousness and facilitating and getting to travel the world and attend classes of uh, Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here, the founders of access consciousness, co-creators. Um, and then I would go back to the salon and there would be this like heavy feeling. I wasn't excited anymore. Like I love doing hair. I love contributing to people and their beauty and them seeing themselves but I didn't have this joy, joyous expression as I was having in this other area of my life. And I was kind of like putting the joy out the door and going to work. And I, I didn't have that before in my salon business. I really loved owning a salon. Um, yes, Mona, if I am truly being me right now, what would I choose? I love it. Yes. Write that one down guys. Okay. So with the salon, I was like, looking at the choice for a very long time. And that's what I'm saying. Allow awareness in, even if it, you're not ready to choose from that awareness, that's okay. You're not wrong. But what if you don't have to avoid the awareness anymore about what's true for you? Okay. And if Facebook, if it looks weird, then I'm looking over here and Instagram, if it looks weird, if I'm looking over here and you're just joining, you're like, what is she doing? She has made major ADHD. It's true. I do, but I'm doing two lives at the same time. Okay. So with the salon, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to start looking at, I'm going to actually start leaning into this. And this is a tool that Dr. Dane gives us is like any choice. And I think Gary gave it to him actually. And, and a choice that you're like, okay, lean in, lean into the, that for three days and, and just try it on energetically. 
So it's like, okay, I woke up today. It's Saturday. I would normally be going to the salon and working eight hours on my feet, hustle and bustle and like seeing a bunch of clients making a lot of money. Huh? Okay. But today I'm going to, even though I'm still doing that, I'm going to lean in to, I wouldn't be doing this drive. I wouldn't be walking into this building. I wouldn't be talking to this person. I would be, and then I would be like, where would I be? And then for me, I would look at the access consciousness calendar and be like, I would be in that country doing that thing with those people. Okay. What's true for me. And it got so lighter and lighter and lighter, the more I let it in. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to take the leap. And then as soon as I chose, thank you, COVID, (laughs) COVID jumped up and said, here's a way to choose with these. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going. So I didn't want to play in the COVID games of this reality with um, uh, salon rules. I was like, all right, well, I just like basically got kicked off the ledge. So I was like, all right, I'm out. And what was so fucking cool that when I chose for me and what was true for me and walked away from that, um, one of the, my favorite stories is I had a stylist that had been with me for 10 years. She was loyal beyond loyal, like one of the most loyal from that energy of loyal people I've ever fucking met. And she, if she's, she might be on here or see it later. She's a phenomenal stylist, but always just was always there from the moment I opened that business, she showed up. And she worked her ass off and she was one of the people I'm choke up just thinking about her. One of the people that I was so afraid to let down because she just had walked through every fire of owning a business with me. And I was like, wow, if I take away like the foundation she's built her clientele on, like I'm really fucked up. <sighs> Sabrina, if you're watching, I adore you so much. Um, thank you for the gift that you were for so long and still are. Um, but what was really cool is that that was one of the loudest experiences in my life that when I chose her, it was true for me, this beautiful, courageous woman went out and opened her own salon. She has her own studio salon and has built it exactly how she would like it. She shared the space with me when I still was doing some clients in the area and watching my choice contribute to her leaping into what she always desired. I can never forget that. Um, and it's these tools, it's these access consciousness tools, being in question, like getting to know you and the gift that you are and willing to go where no one else has gone, um, or willing to go where no one, where people may not come along with. Um, that's been the hardest one for me because we have so much caring for these, for the people in our lives that we think, how dare I go without them? And what we're missing a lot of the time is that when you follow what's true for you, you give permission to people to follow what's true for them. And everybody gets more free from the, um, the defined path or the projected path that they were once on. They look over like my brother's Dr. Dane here. And when he started to like create with access and his life got bigger and bigger and bigger, watching him go and watching him thrive was one of the greatest inspirations, even though I was actually really scared to lose him. I was really scared that my life would be so insignificant in his world that I would have anything to, to talk to him about, let's say. And the beauty of the, and the brilliance and the bigness of that being that is Dane, he could go, but also have this like expansion that included me and invited me and always had a door open to me when I was ready to choose with no pressure, but just saying like, Hey, I'm going for what's true for me. And if I can be a contribution to you, I will. And he always was always has been. And it's why I'm sitting here talking to you today, living a life that I never thought was possible, traveling the world, having amazing relationships with people around the world, creating more than I've ever known I could create. And having like relationships with my kids and watching my kids thrive that I, again, some people that I was like, I can't go and travel. What will happen to them? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're infinite beings and they get to create their own lives and I get to support it, not create it for them. So I didn't give you guys the tool. I mean, I talked about it, but I hope this is an overview of what to look like, look at is the light and heavy is what's true for you. Makes you feel lighter. It has an expression. It has a, that, right? It's like when you're hungry and you're like, people are like, what do you want to eat? And you're like, I don't know. And then someone starts like running down the Uber eats list and they're like, 
hot dogs, pizza, pasta, salad, tacos, and then you hear it and you go, tacos, and then you order it. That's what's true for you, right? So you get the expression. Um, and in that same analogy, when someone's like, you know, I, don't know, I like all foods, so I'm trying to find like something that people want. Like. McDonald's, okay, or something, you know, and they're like, we're going, okay, you know what? You don't know what you want. I'm taking you to McDonald's. You're walking out the door and you're like, oh God, that's not what I'd like. That's the heaviness. That's not what's true for you. Hi, Emily. You might've said hi a million years ago and I'm saying hi now. And over here, you guys, it's going too fast. So I'm not great at saying hello. So I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So what if, what if you just leaned into those, I call them like the nanosecond of awareness of like that moment right after you choose something or right after you ask a question, there's something there that we are autopiloted to ignore. There's an energy that shows up that we are so um, on autopilot of maintaining what is so that nothing else can get in that we don't actually acknowledge that initial awareness. So one of the things you can do is just start asking, Hey universe, show me that, that nanosecond, show me what my, like the choice or the energy that comes right after I ask a question, like, let me be present with that moment right then allow it in and go, okay, cool. If this, is this true for me or truly being me here? What would I choose? Wow, what lights me up? What excites me and allow the energy of that in. Okay. And then look at the choice. Go, okay. I now have this like litmus test. If you will, I have this thing in my world to go, okay, cool. This is me being me. This is me firing on all cylinders. This is me really excited for something where you couldn't hold me back. Like it was getting created. It was getting chosen no matter what. Here it is. Okay. Now when I look at things, I have this awareness of me and I go, huh, someone's asked me to go do this. Wow. I feel really, uh, what is it? Oftentimes with the light and heavy tool, we get, we perceive heavy, but we stop and we go, oh, I don't want to do that. And we have all these points of view about us. And we, we're like, I can't do that. But often if you ask a few more questions, you'll also find the lightness under the heavy. Cause you're like, oh, what is it? Why is that heavy for me? Oh, am I avoiding something? Wow. Is there a lie here? Is the lie that I, I like can't do that or I, I'm not good enough for that? Or am I avoiding judgment? rather than choosing for possibility, huh? You start to ask questions in your life, which is the foundation of access consciousness. And if you're listening to this and don't know anything about access, please send me a message somewhere, wherever you are. And um, I'll get you more information, but you can go to accessconsciousness.com. But if you start to just ask questions in your life, we're so not taught to ask questions. And the funny thing about asking questions, where we were taught to ask questions were of people that we thought and were taught were greater than us and knew more than us. Um, we were taught to ask questions to get someone else's answer or the right answer, the answer that the textbook told us. We weren't taught to create our lives from question of what we would like to have other than like, what college would you like to go to? Uh, what would you like to study? But guess where we find the answer in that? The good, the bad, the right and the wrong of what other people have told us will create our lives a lot of the time. Okay. So starting to this really is an ADHD adventure today. Starting to look from question gets you into being you. And then the doors, the opening the doors to possibility becomes way easier and way more fun because there are doors that are meant just for you. I know that's wild if you heard that for the first time. The first time I heard that I was like, really? There would be a possibility out there that would be just for me? Yes. And the more that I choose to be me, there's no destination in that the more that I have access to the magic of me and the creation of that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this chat. We are kind of come live again on Friday at the same time, talking about another tool. Um, please set, set your clocks, tell your friends. Um, I'd love to have more of you join. And I'm going to throw it out there at the end of the month. Um, I do have a one day being you class where we go through all of these tools that we've talked about today. And if you go to elegar.com, um, forward slash raffle. Check out what Elogar is. It's this land in Costa Rica that um, access consciousness and a ton of really brilliant, beautiful people are investing in. That is an eco-friendly resort that um, I'm really excited to know is on this planet. <laughs> um, they're selling raffle tickets to win a casita there. So if you buy a raffle ticket for $100, you get my class for $100. So you can go through these tools for eight hours um, uh, in one day 
dive in, ask questions, get facilitated, see what doors of possibility are waiting for you for an investment of $200 and a chance to win a $350,000 casita. I mean, if that doesn't light you up and make you feel really light and fun and, and excited and airy, I don't know what is. So um, you're welcome to come check it out. You can go to Sarah Granny to Sarah Grandinetti, that's my name, dot com. Um, and I think the, I think our thing is doors. Yeah. So you can go to, put that over here. Can't put it over here. Sarah Grandinetti.com forward slash doors and check that out. Basically you buy the raffle ticket at El Ugar, You come fill out our form that you bought the raffle ticket. We say, okay. And we give you a, a coupon to get my class for hundred bucks. So, and it's also going to be translated in a lot of languages because there are some fucking phenomenal translators that are um, offering uh, their capacities to this day. So you're all welcome to um, check that out. Tell your friends and join us for another live. Even if you don't want to take a class, you can see us again on the 20. I say us like there's there's multiple of me in front of me, but it's the team behind the scenes that create all this. So um, live uh, on Friday. If you're in Mexico City, we have live classes coming up this month um, and you can come to the opening the doors class live in Mexico City as well. Anyways, join me on the 21st. I don't know what the tool is. I can't fucking remember, but you'll see it posted. And then on the 26th, again, we'll do another one of these. OK, and if you have any questions that you would like answered on these lives, like please do DM the accounts and we will respond accordingly. All right, guys, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Big hugs. Thank you, translators. Thank you, team. I adore you guys so very much. So who do I end first? Instagram first. Bye. Oh, I can't touch screen my laptop. Bye.